Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're here to Kawandi. Yes, we're going to do a hand stitch Kawandi today, but I'm going to do it over a few days so it'll be easy for me to keep up and manage. Now, what you need for a hand stitch Kawandi is I've picked either 22 or 24 uh, chenille needle, a sharp, but I also have a not a Sudoku. Ugh. Sashiko. <laughs> Sudoku's a puzzle. It's like, okay. I also have a Sashiko needle handy, just in case I don't like the shorter needles. I've got some great fan uh, fabric for the backing. And I have some flannel. Yeah, I know it's cows. I have some flannel for the inside, because I want this very light, this tea mat, to be very light. We're only doing a small project. It's going to be like 10 by 15 when we're done. Now, you need some thread conditioner. And I'm going to use embroidery floss because I have lots of it. And I'm going to use the green because I have lots of green. So, and then we have crumbs. I have three buckets of crumbs here that I'm anxious to get into and get moving around. So, we'll, we'll see how this all goes. So, come on in. We'll get right to the sewing and we'll show you how... You need this uh, fabric, your backing fabric, to be really crisply pressed in along. So whatever your size you're going to work on, right, make sure you leave at least half an inch all the way around. And then you crispy, crisply press in that half an inch. So you've got a nice, clean, straight edge. So we're going to come back and get right to the sewing. Come on in. Okay, so I have ironed. A piece a beautiful piece of Henry Alexander fabric and we the the area that we're covering for my Kawandi is 15 by 10 so I cut this a little bit bigger I cut it with an inch or all the way around and then gave them a good half inch I have very healthy half inch fold over so now this is pressed and sharp just the way that they do this in India. So, in my Kawandi also, I'm using a 24 chenille sharp. So, so it's easier for me to get through. I'm using my choices embroidery thread, right? Like DMC embroidery thread. And I'm picking green because I have lots of it. So, when I run out of this green, I'm going to get to another green. And that's kind of the nature of the Kawandi too, is just to use the supplies you have. So I'm also, I have gotten a bunch of stuff that's been folded over by an iron. What the CD women do is they finger press. Yes, I know I'm the queen of the finger pressing. But you see here, some of my pieces weren't big enough. So I actually had to sew them together. And then when I sew them together, I press them open. So... We're just going to do show you the first round here, and I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. Now I'm going to make a simple quilter's knot, so I lay my thread on top of the needle, wrap once, twice, hold that knot with my finger, and pull all the way down. Just a minute, I'll show you again. Okay, so I've got my needle in this hand and my thread in this hand. I lay it across, one, two, hold on to the knot, and pull it through and it gives me a perfect little knot at the end of my thread every time. So then I'm also going to use some thread conditioner because I have this handy and I just love the thread conditioner. The thread conditioner actually all you need is like three pulls. Now, I don't know if the, the CD ladies use uh, thread condition. I don't imagine they do because they're in their country. They're very poor, but this actually prevents your thread from tangling and knotting and all the rest of the stuff. Now, you could use 12 weight uh, thread. You could use 50 weight thread. It's basically the idea is to use what you have kicking about. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start. Now you see I have boxes. I have actually three boxes. And this is going to be just the hand project because we understand some of you don't like to do the, the hand sewing. So we're just going to do a little hand, hand project and then we'll show you um, a sewing machine project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I've got two sides here. Now when you're... 
when you're doing this, you open this up and you lay it down like this and you fold this back and then you hide your corner, right? You basically hide it. You're hiding your little corner away so that people can't see it, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this the other way because I folded it wrong. Okay. See, in order for me to fold this the right way, I had to go the other way. So let's just make this happen like so and open that up like so and just finger press this. And you'd be amazed at the sharp point you get. Now I steam this to get a really crisp edge because you are going to be sewing just right on the edge. So I'm going to just lay this down and fold this over, right? Because I am right handed. I'm going to start stitching. Uh, I'm just going to line this up just a bit better. So I'm going to start stitching about here, right? Leaving this flap open here. I don't know if you can see that really well. I'm leaving this. So I'm going to start about here. And I'm right handed, so I'm going to stitch this way. Right? If you're left handed, you're going to start here and stitch this way around your piece. Right? So, and it doesn't really matter if you're right handed or left handed because this is more, becomes more meditative than anything else. Now, I'm going to just lift up to start because I've got my knot and I want to hide my knot. I just want to start just right at the edge. So I'm just going to pop this up through, just like that. Do you see this? Here. I know, it's kind of all dark. There. And I'm just going to pop it through like that. And now that my thread is on top, and I want to make sure that this ends up very crisp and clean and flat and lovely. So now I'm just going to work a few stitches at a time. And when we were talking about hand stitching earlier, you know, they say take three stitches breathing in, you know, then pull and breathe out. I mean, this becomes, um, this little task becomes very meditative very quickly because you're not thinking about sewing. You're thinking about, you're not even thinking about your next piece you're putting in, right? Because it's just a very relaxing, quiet, slow stitching process, right? So I'm just going to tuck that in. Now, I don't imagine the CD women have pins, but we're going to use a pin just to hold that corner in place because I want a really sharp corner. And there's going to be a lot of bulk. Now, this is the hardest part is actually doing your first round, right? And it's to get that corner the way you want it, right? So I'm just going to keep, and you're going to grab both bottom and top, and you're going through four layers, right? So you take as many as you can, and you don't, you know, whatever. If you can chat with a friend, you can chat with a friend. If you're, you know, by yourself and you're listening to music, you can sing along if you want. It's all, it's all good. Okay, I need one of those rings that push through push through lots of stitches at once. Like those sashiko rings. Those sashiko palm rings. Basically it's a ring with a little metal uh, divot that you push all your, your stitches through. So that's coming together. Pretty cool. And here we're just going to go right up to the corner. And your stitches, don't worry about your stitches. Don't worry about your stitch length. Don't worry about anything. The, the more stitching you do, like you'll see as you get closer to the corner, because you're now going through uh, four, eight layers, right? So it gets really hard. So you just kind of, you know, work your, work your thread through. Go, you know, a little bit more. And you might have to stab the corner because there's a lot of layers. That's okay too. You know, just stab at the corner back and forth. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There. Okay, I'm gonna give it a turn. Oops, I'm gonna give it a turn. 
And you're only putting one piece on at a time, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't worry about color or, you know, anything. I am, I, the only rule I'm going to make is I don't want two exact same pieces to touch. That's the only rule I'm going to make. And with this mix bag that I have here, that's doubtful. So, uh, here we go. We've got to get rid of that pin out of the way. Now I'm right at the corner there. There we go. We've got it. And I'm just going to pin up to here just so that it stays in, stays in the right spot. Otherwise it'll, it might travel a bit. And I've been doing so much hand quilting lately on that sunflower quilt. I actually have there. So, okay. I hum to myself lots. Okay. And I just stab myself a little bit. Oh well. That's what happens when you're working with a sharp. There we go. And you can tell too with your thread if you've um, start, you know, you need to add more conditioner to it. You know, that's okay too to you know, take just a wee break, you know, add a little bit more thread conditioner to your thread. It makes it move quicker and easier. Now I'm just going to move that out of the way. Come back up. All right. Now, what color? What color is next? There we go. So I am going to put this color in next. I'm going to put this color in next, and I'm just going to slip this in right like this, and then turn this over. Now that first stitch, you want to go right, right at that edge, right? So I'm just going to pin here just a little bit, a little bit here, right here. There we go. So I want to drop my needle down just right there, right right where that little piece went and uh, get rid of all the thread bits okay and keep stitching and that's it that's how you add these and you slide them around too I mean you know you make them fit you don't worry about size or you know you don't worry about the size or color I mean it all works this um I found this piece of Henry Alexander, and it was one of those pieces that, ooh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I must have it. And I'm so glad I'm able to put it in here today. So, and you don't want your thread too long. That's the other that's the other big trick about this, is not to have your thread too long, because then you're fighting thread, a longer length of thread, instead of enjoying the process of stitching, right? Okay. Okay, all right. Now. There we go, just like that. I'm gonna do a couple more stitches and then add another piece. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add another piece right now. I think, and I'm going to do I'm going to add pink because I like pink. Oh, wait a minute. And yeah, I'm going to just put. Oh, that's two solids against two solids. Oh, let's put a. Oh, let's put a uh, bright pink in. Okay, so this pink goes right in there like that. I'm going to shuffle it over just a hair. Now you see I've got some different lengths happening here, and that's okay. Not all my pieces are going to be the same size, right? So I'm just going to pin down here. Now you can also see a little shadow through in that white, or the, the lighter pink, but that's okay. That's okay too, because I am going to put a little um, flannelette batting, just flannelette, like one layer of flannelette just to just to give it a little bit of weight to it. 
Okay. There we go. And what should be next? Okay. Ooh, let's put gray. Ooh, that would be nice. Okay, that's... Ugh, that is folded the wrong way. There we go. I'll just refold it. There we go. You can slip that in as close as you can. Nope. just about at the edge and I'll show you how to do the next corner so we want to make our stitch meet there like right into that gray so where I put those two together right so you have oh, okay here. I'm losing my stitch hang on hang on hang on okay we'll get through here The hardest bit is the outside edge. And I see where everybody's talking about the outside edge being tough because I'm used to sewing pieces with a little more, you know, weight to them, especially when I do a lot of hand quilting because you've got the batting and all this stuff, right? So, but I think this is just a very beautiful technique. Okay. All right, we'll get to the edge here. And just go to the edge as close as you feel comfortable. Right? And that's important too. You feel comfortable working with this. These pieces are very, they're always very eclectic. Very, very lovely. Very lovely. Okay. Now... There we go. Okay, so now we're at the next piece. Now it has to be a corner piece. So there, everything is lying pretty good. So it has to be a corner piece. So a corner piece, you want to go up and along this side here. Okay, so you want this to be like that just perfectly in there okay now and i'm going to put a pin in there right where'd my pin go <laughs> and i want this to be pinned right there because that's it where exactly where i want that line to go that line of that cloth but now i have a big overlap so in order to get around the overlap I'm just going to fold under. That's right, it's all finger press, all about finger pressing. And I'm just going to put a line in there like so with my finger. And just there. And just pop that down as hard as I can, as close to the edge as I can. And I have a little bit of room here. So I'm going to, oops, okay, hang on, I lost my needle. So I'm going to push this up and push this up there. Those seams now are both up and they're being secured. It's almost easier to do it this way. Okay. There. We're on a roll. Okay, now... I'm just going to make sure that looks right. And if you make a mistake, just pull it out. Just, you know, it's not, a, it's not, you know, it, it's not like something you can't undo. Oops. I'm going to pull my... There we go. So now you just stretch that just a bit. Make it flat. 
You don't want it bubbling too much. And you don't want to pull your thread too much. So that works. That works with that little finger press down. Right? Okay. Now I'm just going to continue on to the corner. And then I'll show you how to turn that corner. Because it's once you get the turning your corners down, it's easy to do. This is very easy to do. There we go. And just... And like I say, you are working with eight layers of fabric suddenly, and that might cause you some difficulty. But just you know, stab at first. Just stab it once at a t one, one stitch at a time. I mean, that's all you're going to be able to do, right? You know, some people don't have any strength in their hands, but they want to learn how to do this. It'll be easier technique to do to learn once your past this corner here. Okay, so now we're past the corner, or we're at the corner, and I'm just going to make sure I've got a good line of what I want to sew. And I'm going to put this down here, about half an inch away from my edge, this raw edge here. And then I'm going to go back down and through there we go. It's almost easier to do from behind, believe it or not. <laughs> this is probably not the way they do it, but oh well. well. I know they don't iron their stuff, but they just fold it over and get it in there and get it work it. So I, as soon as I heard about this technique, I was like, oh my, that would be perfect for me. Yeah. Okay, so now we're past that corner. Okay, there. Okay. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to pull that just a bit. This one gives me a little bit more. And I'm holding it now very naturally from behind. So because I'm right-handed, I tend to work from right to left, right, so. But I mean, the first round, the first round you do any way you want. The, the idea here is to get a nice sharp edge, right? Okay. So once you get your first round on, then you can change to working it from the front. And basically what you're doing then is uh, running around until, like what I'm going to do next is once I get it all the way around, I'm going to show you how to lay in your uh, flannel or batting if you want, batting in there, you could put batting in there, or you could just leave it, right? And then um, I'll show you how to... You know, once you get your batting in, then you do another round where you're just securing your batting because all of this is lying in place. You don't have to fill in. You're going to do like a finger width of stitching apart, right? So as you go make your rounds, this is going to fill up very quickly. So I'm going to pause it here until I get all the way around until we start showing our batting. Okay, so we've gone all the way around now, and our first, the, so this now is, is, is outside. So this measures uh, 10 inches, well, 10 and a quarter, and I believe it was 15. Yeah, there's three inches here. So when you measure it out on the, using the cutting board and this, it's like 15 inches. So what I want to do now is I want to add batting, but I don't want batting weight, right? So what I did is I cut some flannel, some soft flannel. Yeah, I know it's cows, it's cute. But I cut it at, where is this now? 
I cut it at nine and three quarters, so I'm hoping it fits. Now I just cut two different pieces. So when you're lining this, basically you're going to lift these up and push them into the corner so they lie flat. Let's see if I can't get this. And you want to kind of tuck it under the this. Like you want to tuck it under here, like under this this. So what you want to do is you want to push it in and get it as close to the edge as you can. And I'm going to put the cow side down. <laughs> so people don't think it's strange that I put a cow in here, but oh well. Anyway, so I want to tuck this under here. So what I've sewn, and this is the backing, so this is where the batting is now going to be tucked in underneath there. So it's kind of a, you kind of have to wiggle it a little bit and, you know, and, and just to make sure it fits. Now if it's too big, trim it down just a tad, because all you want to do is have it fit. This doesn't have to be precise. Now you could use regular cotton batting if you want. Let me see if I got that in there. Yes, I did. So you can use regular cotton batting if you wanted to. This, but it would make it stiffer. And I just want a light weight little thing that goes between the table, between where my husband and I sit at night. That's where my kawandi is going to end up, my little kawandi. So now I've got two pieces. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. And I'm just going to lift these up and kind of position it and try and get it underneath in the corner the best I can. And there it is. Here's my corner. This is about using what you have. And this is very much what the CD people talk about when they're, when they're asked about what they're doing, right? Well, this is what I have to make, you know. This is the only materials, and they use old stuff and everything. I'm using my crumbs. I've actually joined my crumbs together, and it's kind of an unusual way of doing it by from working on from the outside in to the middle. But once once we get past this first round, I'll show you how to start adding in pieces. But that'll be tomorrow, because I have a funny feeling I'm going to still be fiddling with this. For a while so anyways just and now I did iron it I gave it a good press with steam and then we started playing with this just to make sure everything was lying flat okay let's get that there so so now because I want just a bit there so now two layers of batting or flannel is not going to disrupt my stitching at all so I'm good so we will so that's how you do this now I'm going to use pins just to hold my pieces in place because I got some that are well they're a little thin for the edging but I want them to stay in place so I'm going to pin them in place just to ensure that I have you know a good a good seam or good coverage right so this one just wants to twist just a little I'll keep hold it in place by just doing this right and now I've got something to pin to because this back is a little bit sturdier and that's a little thin but that'll do that'll do I've, I've got enough there so I'm just gonna pin around and then I'm gonna keep going around and I'll show I'll, I'll come back when I have to start adding pieces and I guess it'll be where my pickles are and I'll show you what you do then okay so I'll see you tomorrow and we'll get more of this done okay so here we are I'm gonna show you how to add in parts of the second row or just the one part of the second row now I have switched over to a sashiko needle because I found a longer needle was much easier for me to maneuver and when I'm going through these two layers of flannel and the one layer of back and then like this I was finding the sashiko was stronger it was actually a stronger needle it was easier to work with and I didn't find it was so difficult so if you're having problems with this change the needle so I've done the the base round and now I've, I'm working on round five or six so you only want your stitches like a quarter inch away like on each round right so now I'm coming up to this so I have 
the opportunity to slip something in behind and because this is short, a little short on the short side, I'm going to just place it like that. Like just like that. I'm going to put it. Now you find the other thing you'll find with this as you're sewing, it starts to bowl, right? Like so this the outer edge starts to shrink and you have more excess here. Don't worry about it. Don't don't panic about that. So you're just slipping this in and you're going to move it just a little bit closer in. Now I've ironed this, but and now you want to just catch and it doesn't matter that the pieces aren't matched, right? It doesn't matter at all. So what you want to do is now you want to stitch this just so you catch this right here where this overlaps and you want to catch just right along this little edge right here. So you want to be able to make sure that you've got like good coverage on your edges, right? So I'm just going to stab through. I've been working today with my hands, doing some hand quilting, so my hands are a little bit more limbered up right now than they were yesterday. So now I'm just, because I'm doing lots of layers, I'm just, you know, stabbing one stitch at a time, and sometimes you've got to sew like that. That's okay. Now, when I, I, I have caught that seam, that intersection right there. So I'm hoping you can see that. And you do that with every, with every row of stitching, right? Like this right here, every row of stitching, you're keeping that little seam, instead of flapping about, you're keeping it so in place, right? So, now I'm just gonna go right up here and just catch that edge for, from this bigger piece here, and I wanna get right near right near the end, right? So, now let me just wiggle that through and let me straighten it, flatten it out a little bit here and make sure I'm in the right spot. Yes, I am. And we're just gonna start doing a little bit of stitching. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Right like that. Okay, so you're right along that edge. Now, yeah, there's a little bit that pops up on this side. You could try and get closer. Remember, you're adjusting your stitching for the piece that you're putting on, right? So, if you have to, you know, just do one stitch at a time because there's a lot of bulk all of a sudden when you're adding pieces in, don't worry about it. And you just get there and you get it as close as you can and you just keep working around. So I'm going to finish working around. I'll show you how to do, and you just keep putting pieces in like this. And if you run into trouble and you've got a gaping hole, you put a patch over it. Like you don't think about this, right? This becomes very addictive, very meditative, very, I was very, very uh, shocked at how quickly this, this goes so hang on all right I have to push this through with my needle because I'm going through like two layers here and the back right so I've got lots of layers here that I've got to try and get through okay all right there we go just like that and now we're pushing through okay I'm sorry, I've got this all over with the angles, right? But I'm trying to maneuver this, but I need to press down on my mat to get my needle close enough to pull through. Okay, just, I'm having, I needed one of those, uh, what was it, those needle pullers. Those needle pullers would have been good. But anyway, so as I'm coming up to this edge here, that turns over, right? I'm now going to hit another bunch of uh, layers again. So I'm, you know, and I'm going to be stabbing one stitch at a time. Ugh, okay, one stitch at a time. 
and I'm going to try and move my stitch so that I get right into that corner and now I'm going to drop just right up against that edge right there can you see that where I'm getting because I want that corner that little corner to be sewn down Ugh. and we make a mess there we go just like that it's not focusing okay just all right right there there's the focus I hope you see that so that stitch goes down there and then we go back to our regular stitching now let me get up on this side and of course now I just keep going around I'm going to have some pieces here on this side that I'm going to have to add you know because I'm not going to make it all the way around without having to add a bit, few more pieces so this is where you add pieces as you need to and this is a quarter inch so you want to make sure you you know it's a little bit more than a quarter inch right so you want to make sure that you add another piece and it can be like two pieces or two pieces that are sewn together to make it long enough or big enough or whatever to add some interest to your work so I'll come back when I get right near the end in the middle for the last bit of this and show you how to finish the middle okay we're now at the very center of my the Kawandi and this is all about making it fit and making it work so I added this last little piece and I tried to you know tuck in it in and you can see I'm pin basting around the last little bit here just to make sure it works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stitching all the way from this piece here and go right along and then out in the back and just keep going around like I've only got like a couple of rounds left in the middle before we get to that big ta-da moment but making it work is important and you keep tucking in those raw edges wherever you can um, I've never worked on anything like this where I didn't know what it was going to look like until the very end so you know join me on this pro process here it's it's coming together it came together really good so just so I wanted to let you know just tuck it in make it work do the best you can I might change the angle of this just a hair just a hair and I can because I just unfold it and I go down just a little bit deeper on my fold and go down just a little deeper on the fold and then fold in and I can you know get a little bit of angles going here so if I don't like that look right um, another thing I might suggest people will try is uh, you know pin basting I don't know or pin this is pin basting basically I'm pinning my place and my pieces in place but you could try thread basting if you aren't if you're not comfortable with all the little pins that you're gonna hook on onto so well let me just finish this up and then we'll show you what it all looks like okay this is our ta-da moment and here we go this is the little tea mat that I was talking that I've been making that I've been showing you how we've done this sewing now remember I told you it, it bold in the middle because you're working from the outside and you're doing all this intense stitching it did become flat all on its own and you I kind of finagle the middle to get it to work this isn't about anything other than making it work so this I'm quite pleased with and it does have a nice drape to it it's got some some give you know there's some firmness with it but I mean it is it's got a nice drape now this will go on a little table between my husband and myself and yes it did shrink up because we were making this 15 by 10 and it did shrink with all of the stitching so the stitching brings it in so if I was going to do this again I would go about an inch bigger on you know on all four sides and then you know then it wouldn't shrink as much so I did switch to a sashiko needle I found them a lot sharper and a lot easier to work with and a thread conditioner was a must between um, if you're gonna do this the thread conditioner actually makes your 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 uh, embroidery thread stronger 
but it also keeps it from knotting. Now, I did use pins. If I was going to do a larger project by hand again, I think I might cheat a little bit just by doing a bit of uh, basting with thread just on, on some of the bigger pieces, just to hold them in place so they weren't flipping and flopping around. That way I wouldn't have to deal with pins. So these are my suggestions. This is the first one I've made. I can hardly wait to do the one by a sewing machine method because uh, that's going to eat up a lot of these scraps because the project is much larger. So anyways, tell me what you think in the comments below. It does have lovely texture. The texture there is just gorgeous. When you're touching it, it's uh, it's just wonderful. And it's completely washable. Just totally washable. If you spill a little tea on it or coffee, just chuck it in the wash. It's all good. Though. It, it will get more texture when you throw it in the dryer, but it's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. Come on back and we'll show you how to do this by a sewing machine. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other, other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars and it's a lot of fun to do and it, it is a really good scrap buster so share like subscribe tell your friends about us uh our plan for 2022 is two different so longs for sure and two different case studies and we're gonna do uh try and do a thing on uh grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves so we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned for you here. So, like I say, I hope you come back. Have a great week ahead, and we'll talk to you later. Bye!